There are some who think Jared Diamond's argument is too neat and easy. Can the distribution of wealth and power really be reduced to cattle and wheat? What about culture, politics, and religion? Surely they've been just as important. Diamond's been criticized for being too deterministic, for ignoring the part people have played in shaping their own destiny. My years in New Guinea have convinced me that people around the world are fundamentally similar. Wherever you go, you can find people who are smart, resourceful, and dynamic. No society has a monopoly on those traits. Of course, there are huge cultural differences, but they're mainly the result of inequality, they're not its root cause. Ultimately, what's far more important is the hand that people have been dealt, the raw materials they've had at their disposal. New Guineans acquired pigs from Eurasia, but not cows or sheep or goats or horses or wheat or barley. They didn't develop in the same way as Europeans and Americans because they didn't have the same raw materials. I'm not saying that those divisions of the world are set in stone and can't be changed. It's quite the opposite. The towns of Papua New Guinea are becoming bigger and more developed, populated by modern New Guineans trying to catch up with the rest of the world. Unfortunately for them, there's still a big gap to overcome. Why you white men have so much cargo and we New Guineans have so little? Yali caught me by surprise 30 years ago. I had no idea what to say to him then, but now I think I know the answer. Yali, it wasn't for lack of ingenuity that your people didn't end up with modern technology. They had the ingenuity to master these difficult New Guinea environments. Instead, the whole answer to your question was geography. If your people had enjoyed the same geographic advantages as my people, your people would have been the ones to invent helicopters. Jared Diamond set out to explore the division of the world into haves and have-nots. He's convinced the blueprint for that division lies within the land itself. But can his way of seeing the world really shed light on the turning points of human history? Can it explain how a few hundred Europeans conquered the New World? and began an age of domination. The age of guns, germs, and steel. Hey, 